What's up, Dart family? We're back in the Dart language tour, annotating the docs. Today, we are in the classes section, talking about getting an object's type. Uh, as you can see here, it's pretty short type. We'll see if we can get this done in under 15 minutes. Um, all right, so to get an object's type means to determine what kind of object it is. Is it a string? Is it a list? Is it just an object? Um, is it null? Is it something? Is, 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 is. Um, and you'll see down here later, we talk about type test operators um, where you can determine what something is. Uh, and in fact, there are, there are two kind of ways to determine an object's type. And um, yeah, we'll just run through some examples and, and figure it out. So to get an object's type at runtime, so um, in Dart, there's a difference between at runtime, you know, when the, the let's say you've got a Flutter app on your phone, uh, that's your program at runtime versus when it's compiled. Um, okay, uh, when you compile software, then you're able to distribute it um, like on a mobile app. That's how people download it, right? Um, so to get an object's type at runtime, you can use the object property runtime type, which returns a type object. Okay, so let's go look at the docs real quick. Dart object API. Is that going to do it? Yeah, object class. So what did it say? You can use the object property runtime type. Okay, yeah, so we've got properties here. You've got hash code runtime type. It returns a type. Um, so type is a class itself, okay? It says it's a representation of the runtime type of the object, and it is read only. Okay, type, runtime type. Uh, a representation of the runtime type of the object. Here's how it's implemented, external type, get runtime type, okay. There is no way to get to the uh, GitHub where I can look at the code itself. Hmm, anyways. Okay, so we can't do that here. I thought there was usually a little button over here. Maybe not. Okay, so right. You can use the object's property runtime type, which returns a type object. Um, they're actually hyperlinking this here, so maybe that's something good to look at as well. I haven't really looked at type too much. Um, looks like it also has properties. Hash code and runtime type. Um, it's inherited, so this is kind of cool when you're looking at um, objects or, or classes that inherit from object, uh, you can see that it inherits from, um, from object. Does it say it, it extends from object, like who the parent is? Runtime representation of a type, the type objects represent types. Okay, it can be created. Um, Entry point for using term mirrors, the only operation supported. Um, yeah. Okay, that's kind of interesting. Okay, so here's an example. Let's look at this first. We're just going to print something. Uh, I have some stuff up here I'm going to save for later, so let's create another main function. Remember, you don't have to save void, it can just work. Um, but we can say var a equals let's say hello world. Okay, so now we think that when we print the type is the type of a is um, a dot runtime type. I'm going to guess that that's a string. Okay, <clears throat> the type of a is string. Okay, if we change a to 42. The type is an integer. Okay, if we you know 
have an array, one, two, three. Then the type is a list um, in Dartpad. It's gonna say it's a JS array, okay? Um, you know, if you have a map, okay, it's like that. That could be a JS link hash map. If you have an empty set, oop, not like that. Set literal can't be prefixed by set. Um, how do you do a set? I've done it before, but it's been so long. Is it that? Like a new set, an empty set? Yeah, a linked hash set. Okay. Um, right, so that is the type, um, like that. That is, that is the runtime type. You just call it on an object. So a dot runtime type, um, again, a dot, and then you've got this list of things, like right now it's a set, so it's bringing in a lot of these other um, properties and methods, but hash code, runtime type, those are both inherited from object, okay? And that's how you get that. Okay, um, you might want to get a, a, a thing's type in order, and usually I think you use it in conditions, like if uh, this thing is of this type, do, you know, go down this path and go, go do this one thing. Otherwise, it's a, if it's of this type, do another thing. Maybe if it's an, of an undesirable type, uh, then you want to throw an error. Um, so there's things you can do just based on the, the type of the object itself. Um, and remember this object is an instance of a class, okay? Um, there is a warning here though. Let me see, so we're done with that definition. There is a warning, it says, use a type test operator rather than runtime type to test an object's type. In production environments, the test object is type is more stable than the test object.runtime type is equal to type. Hmm. What does this mean? <laughs> Let's go look at a type test operator. Okay. In the beginning, I was using the word is a lot. Uh, it depends on what the definition of is is. Um, this is <laughs> describing a type. Uh, the as is and is bang operators are handy for checking types at runtime. So now we're quickly getting into uh, territory where we're like, well, what's the difference and when should I use one or the other? Okay, um, note real quick that there's really only two types of test operators here. We have as, which is typecast, also used to specify library fixes, uh, prefixes, and then there's is and is bang. Um, I guess for some reason they couldn't put the bang in front of is, but it, they're just the opposite of each other. And it's uh, is is true if the object has the specified type. Okay. Let's see. Right. So let's go back. And um, I did save this code up here for this purpose. Okay. And I got this from a Stack Overflow article. Um, so how to post runtime type checking in Dart. Uh, this was posted a long time ago, basically 10 years ago, a little over 10 years ago. Wow. Um, I think the docs have changed or the specification may have changed a little bit. Um, and the poster is asking about instance of like, and I believe that comes from JavaScript. Um, and this Dart mirrors here, this tag, um, that that was also, I think we saw that in the type class documentation. There was a little snippet about it. Okay, <clears throat> so the instance of operator, if you're familiar with that, I'm not, um, is called is in Dart. It says the spec isn't exactly friendly to a casual reader. Um, I don't know if that, I think when I checked out this link, it really didn't tell me too much. Um, and yeah, so here's an example. So here's the, the accepted answer. Um, I thought there was a better or more instructive answer for what we're doing right now. 
Okay, here's one example by uh, Günther Zuchbauer. He says, runtime type is only for debugging purposes and the application code shouldn't depend on it. Okay, it can be overridden by classes to return fake values and probably returns unusable values when transpiled to JavaScript. This was answered five years ago. Um, so I don't know if it's still accurate. It had 15 upvotes. Okay, people found that very useful. Maybe because it's opinionated, maybe because it's correct. I don't know. But if this is correct, then runtime type almost reminds me of the, the keyword assert, right? So assert <clears throat> is uh, you assert things in your code in a development debug environment so that you could catch errors and fix them. Um, but in production, you're going to deploy that assert code and but when it's in production, uh, it's completely ignored. Okay, um, this runtime type reminds me, maybe you're gonna use it for debugging purposes. Uh, you put in a print statement or try to evaluate the type at the time just to better understand what's going on in your code, but you're not actually going to use this in production, okay? Uh, the warning again was to use the type test operator where you use the is keyword or the as keyword rather than runtime type, okay? in production environments, okay? So they're saying in production environments, the test object is type, it's more stable. Um, what does stable mean? It means that it's, it's more reliable, that whenever you have this test um, in a conditional, not in an actual test file, um, when that's in a conditional, it is more likely to return the same thing every time. Uh, you as a developer or you know, inherit using somebody's library or package in your code, it's less likely that they're gonna be able to muck with the Dart language in such a way that it's going to change how uh, this expression operates. Okay, uh, I think that's what that means. Right, um, but I did want to show an actual example. Okay, just to give credit where credit is due. Uh, so this is Eduardo's answer. And do I have it like that? Yes, I do. Okay, so um, what this individual is showing here is that you can have a conditional, like if foo is foo, print it's a foo, okay? And we're doing that because we have this class foo. We're creating a new one here. Uh, but then whenever we get the runtime type uh, in the class of foo, we are overriding runtime type to just return a string, okay? Um, and that's why we're saying type is a string. So it's unstable in the sense that you can override runtime type. So let's see it in action. Okay. okay. I'm just going to delete this one at the bottom so it doesn't confuse us. Um, right. So we have this class foo and we have a new foo here. If foo is foo, print it's a foo, otherwise print the runtime type. Let's just run it as is. Okay. It's a foo. Type is string. Uh, the one thing I want to show you here is annotate overridden members. Okay, so remember, class extends object. We get this whole extends object thing for free, as they say, um, meaning it's the default, a hidden default, and we don't have to be verbose about it. Uh, but runtime type is from object, um, and so we need to annotate when we override. You may have noticed this from Flutter when you override your build method. Okay, so now everything's correct and our little warning goes away. Again, um, instantiating an instance of a class used to require the new keyword, uh, and we no longer have to do that. Okay, so unnecessary new keyword goes away. Right, entry point into our program. Um, we didn't have void there. Did this person have? Yeah, they didn't either. 
So that's just fun to remember that you don't have to have the return type. Uh, but main is a special keyword. That's our entry point. Um, this foo we are instantiating. In fact, we could say that. That's the type that foo is going to be. Uh, this is the instantiation. And now we say if foo is foo, then print foo is a foo, you know, print runtime type. I think it's gonna print the same thing. We didn't really change anything. We just fixed some warnings. Um, but if we had said foo.runtime type is equal to foo, it wouldn't print it's a foo, would it? Okay, so we're no longer printing that because the runtime type turns out to be a string because we've mucked with it here. Um, right, okay, so what we wanted to say was foo is foo uh, or maybe and it's not a string, okay? Okay, so right now foo is is not a string, but then it is a string. <laughs> so, yeah, what about as? Foo as foo. Can we do that? Conditionals must have a static type of bool. Okay, so that doesn't necessarily do what I thought it would do. Okay, so uh, this was all about getting an object's type. Um, Yep, there's a runtime type. You don't want to use that in your production code. You don't want to depend on it in such a way. Uh, instead, use a type test operator, such as foo is foo. Um, and yeah. All right, so these first three sections, using class members, using constructors, and getting an object's type. It says up to here, you've seen how to use classes. The rest of this section shows how to implement classes, okay? So it's about to get really good, I promise you. Uh, thanks for hanging out with me. We'll see you next time.